This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Michigan Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. Miss Lewis, could you come to the microphone, please? Hello, my name is Adrian Lewis. I am the mother of seven children, and I have one child currently in my custody. I have an extensive history with CPS, um, which began with me trying to obtain help for um, myself um, with housing, counseling, different um, programs that I knew that I could access through DHS. Um, programs that were meant to help people who wanted to move up in life. Um, I discovered that I had been taken. It was a trap. Um, the workers would come to my home, make me promises, we'll give you a voucher, we'll do this for three months, do this for six months, do this for nine months. I would continue to do whatever was asked of me and I would always end up feeling as though I was suckered. Um, my children were first removed from my home in 1999 um, with a fictitious petition which said that I was um, paranoid schizophrenic. Never been diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic, but a worker wrote that up in his report and that he felt I was emotionally unstable. I was taken before an all-white jury and lost custody of my children. Um, they were also told that my children were sexually abused. No sexual abuse tests were done um, until my children were taken and then the jury was not made aware of the evidence that there was no sexual abuse. Um, there were many allegations at the time. Um, in the meantime, I started to deteriorate. Um, I had to, I placed one of my other children with her grandparents to keep her safe because I was fearful um, and continued to bring her back and forth to keep her in my life and as a part of our family, keep our family together. Um, in turn, um, DHS somehow took my child from me and gave her to her grandparents as though I was some kind of animal, a breeder, just to lay down and have a child and take it as long as it wasn't with me. Everything was fine. I developed post-traumatic stress, depression, and a lot of different anxieties behind that. And I eventually deteriorated to the point where um, when I would go to doctors, there were things in the report saying that I was a paranoid schizophrenic, Munchausen by proxy, never diagnosed with these things, but because workers talking to doctors about these things and other officials and all these records coming together in databases and all these people are talking and coming together, these are the things that are circulating around me. So by the time I get to a certain location, um, everything is already mapped out for me. So in 2006, it got to the point where I was homeschooling my children. Um, I got too sick to homeschool them. I was too fearful to even put them in school. Um, I was too fearful to take them to the doctor. And yet when I talk to people and I talk to officials, 
my fear was real. It was based on not things in my head. It was based on things that were actually happened and had actually happened. Um, again, and I lost custody of my children, thinking that I would get help in getting them back. But instead, they chose to give my children, even though I had given my mother custody of my children. They gave my children to their father, who was a full-blown crack addict. And they felt that it was better to patch him up for a few months, and he was sober five months. And I do have documentation that he had relapsed, and yet and still they gave him, in his full-blown addiction, three of our children. In the meantime, in 2009, I had a daughter. And I had this child explicitly to show the court that I could take care of a child and that I was capable of handling the facts about raising a child, rearing a child and raising that child up. I knew I would be dealing with DHS. Everything was fine. I dealt with the social workers, my doctors. I went to all my appointments. I was elated. I thought I could not lose. I dealt with Bethany. I dealt with Catholic social services worker. Everything went fine. Judge Gardner told the Bethany and Catholic services worker, you guys have totally missed the mark. Because they had nothing negative to say. I was doing everything right. So later on, um, she sent, she actually sent in D.A. Blodgett and sent the same worker that had been on my case with my other children. This lady made up a complaint and had my daughter removed from my home. And with that removal came more stress. I suffered a miscarriage. I hemorrhaged out before I got to the hospital. They wanted to give me a transfusion. I refused because I could heal at home. My daughter was on the news on Mother's Day. I'm sorry. And I was so glad I didn't get a chance to see it. But the next day when I went to group, everybody was talking about that they seen my daughter. And I was just shocked and that she would be on television on Mother's Day. And, I, and she was away from me for 10 months. But an ombudsman's report came back that they violated policy when they took my daughter. And my daughter was taken from me for 10 months. 10 months for nothing. When they violated policy, they violated my rights. They had no right to just go on history, and history which they were very much a part of. Thank you. Mr. Scott Bush, please come to the microphone. Uh, my name is Scott Bush. I am from uh, Kent County, and um, I have five children. One uh, uh, is a stepson from my wife. Um, my story is kind of a rinky story, like everybody else's. Um, about a year ago, my son was having some issues um, in schooling and having some other behavioral issues. He uh, was diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, ODD. And we uh, had called to find out uh, what services were out there for this type of thing because there isn't very many services out there for parents who are dealing with uh, such things. So we contacted um, uh, CPS about that. Uh, they gave us uh, 
a uh, couple people to work with in home that would come each week to uh, uh, help us with the behavioral or medications to try to you know come up with solutions uh, um, better te techniques and things to to hit that um, during this process um, it was coming to an end and on the very last day uh, when the services were to end um, the lady uh, decided that uh, she was going to report uh, something to CPS. What it is, I do not know to this date. I still do not know to this date why they took my children. Um, but I can tell you this. The very next day, I had a detective and, uh, again, a Miss K. Bilinga literally storm into my home in front of me and all of my children. And... Um, I have to excuse the language, but um, God forgive me, but um, she walked into my home, she pointed at me and my wife, and she said, um, I am a bitch. I am the definition, I am everything that was ever created about a bitch. Don't fuck with me or you will lose your kids now. That put fear in me, put fear into my wife, they split everybody up, took everybody and put them in this and that started questioning everybody nothing became of nothing at that point in time next thing you know we're getting told we need to go to court we're stunned we're shocked we don't know what's going on we go to this thing called a PPC meeting they tell us that we need to go through all these classes because um, this lady had reported that my wife had written a four page suicide letter and that me and all my children ages 19 all the way down to three years old were sitting around a table pointing fingers at each other saying your mom you're the reason why she killed herself you're the reason why she wrote the letter you're the reason why you did this and this telling us that's what we said to our children absolutely unequivocally false none of that ever occurred it is absurd that that would even be brought up on top of that after CPS got involved they decided to do their dirty little tricks and they decided to dig extremely deep into my wife's mm, childhood and found out that my oldest one who is 19 he is deaf um, is a product of her being raped by her dad she decided to walk into our home and berate my wife about her being raped and that he was a product of that. She even went as far and was as bold to say, does he know who the father is? Maybe we should tell him. Um, 19 years old, deaf, no. And was telling her, well, does it bother you? Do you need help? It should bother you that's a problem have you ever dealt with it you need to get help and kept going on and on and on forced her to go into counseling through the YWCA watch in return when she went to the YWCA uh, a big thing they tried to do was um, turn everything around and villainize the father me and started trying to work on her mentally to get her to think that now I'm a bad person or this or that or whatever else it is. Miss Kay Bailinga also wrote up a report saying that my daughter and kids were saying that um, they needed dental work um, and that all my kids were talking about how um, they couldn't go to school, they couldn't go out in public because their teeth and everything look so bad and everything. Drumming up stories to villainize and make us look bad. I have a question to ask too about the suicide. This suicide letter she was talking about, our kids were pulled out four months after this was brought up. If I'm a social worker and I'm a caseworker and you and I walk into somebody's home or someone tells me they're suicidal or they write a four page suicide letter I believe in in a in a normal state of mind if I hear that someone wrote a four page suicide letter and I know that 
I'm going to call Pine Rest. I'm going to get some help for this lady or this person. Not wait four months to let this drag on and pull your baloney and do all this stuff that happened. And that's what happened there. Um, on top of that, she walked in and she said, you have 28 days to get your home fixed, cleaned up. Even though I was in the process of remodeling my home, adding a room, doing some things, um, you need to get it fixed right now. Well, what that did in return is put a lot of stress on the family. It made me spend a lot of savings. It made me take out loans. It put me in debt. And now I am in a bankruptcy because of the actions that I was forced into doing because of them. Um, now, even I have my children back after just five months, which if you look at the... Um, uh, the foster care system, that's a record. That's because I actually had a caseworker through D.A. Blodgett who was fortunately sane enough to read and review my case. And she reviewed the case. And even at hers, off the record, I will put, I will be fair to her, off the record, she said, I was wronged. I was screwed. She said I should get a lawyer. She said I should sue. Okay. Um, but I did get my children back. But it's funny. I had to have my children go to foster care to have problems. My kids didn't have problems before they went. My kids were normal children doing, going to school, going to doctor's appointments. I've never missed doctor's appointments, never missed dental appointments. My kids were always in school. I've never had abuse, never had anything against me in my life. I don't have a criminal record, don't do drugs, I don't do alcohol. I've never even had a ticket. Why am I here? No reason. Money. It's purely based on money. Money, and if you're on welfare, or a person they can take advantage of. You cannot have a job if you do not have a client. You have to have a client to have a job, just like any job. You have got to have a client, and it takes money. And when kids get fostered out, there's a lot of money involved with that. And if you have four and five children involved with the family, that's big, big money. It is something that needs to be investigated. It has to be looked at. This lady, Kay Bilinga, is a scam. She needs to be taken down. And you've heard that name twice, and you will hear it a lot more if it's investigated. But um, the system needs to be changed quickly. There's a lot of kids who are hurting. And these kids are going to go against society someday when they finally grow up and find out what government, city, state, whomever it is, have done to them, like this gentleman here. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, wetting your pants in school, that, uh, is that familiar to anybody else but me? Huh? Yeah, remember that one. Can take you to the exact spot. Um, next on our, our uh, agenda is this guy named John who will present a little bit of CPR legislative goals. But I want to change that a little bit and uh, hear from some of you folks. And I'd like to start with Peter uh, Konechi from Roscommon, candidate for U.S. Senate. Uh, we were privileged to have Randy Heckman here uh, the last time we had a meeting like this. So I don't, I don't know if you've met Randy, but he uh, is also running for the same seat in the same party. So it's encouraging to me to have uh, some folks uh, that uh, we can have some confidence in running. So, and then uh, we'll take uh, other comments from you gentlemen at the table. And then I'd like to come back and uh, share some comments of what we think would uh, be useful to help with the problem. So, Peter. Thank you very much. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. My name is Pete Knetchy. Um, Judith invited me up here tonight, so I appreciate the invitation. Um, I have to admit, I'm not real familiar with CPS, and I've heard some heartbreaking stories tonight, and it seems like it's a program which started out with perhaps good intentions, but it seems like it has some very serious problems that need to be addressed. I am a candidate for the U.S. Senate, and I just want to give you a little bit about um, why I'm running. When I look at government today, I'm very, very frustrated with the size of government and the scope of government. 
It seems that it's inserted itself into every aspect of our life. And by doing that, it seems like we're no longer a free people. I have to look Benda. I'm very impressed with her analysis or her view of America. Because I have the same basic view. When I look at our founders, you know, they fought the most powerful nation on earth and what they wanted, and they overcame the most powerful nation. They overcame tyranny. And they instituted a free nation, a nation of free men. And the way they did it was through the federal government. The only powers that were allocated to the federal government were national in scope. So they allowed the national government to be in charge of things like defense or immigration or a national court system. But they never gave the federal government any authority whatsoever over the lives of the people. And that was the only way that we could remain a free people. The founders knew that a people, a free people, always take care of their own needs, plus needs of their own community, much better than any government bureaucracy. In my opinion, when you have government, a government bureaucracy wants to address problems. You know, they're charged with some tasks, such as protecting kids. And then the scope of that program grows and grows and grows, and pretty soon you have all these unintended consequences. And rather than just taking care of kids, it seems that they're now taking care of problems that they created. Maybe they want more revenue. I don't know if that's the case or not. Maybe they want more power, bigger budget, or whatever. I have no idea what the reason is. But it seems that they're just addressing problems that are of their own creation, perhaps. My own opinion is that being a free nation, such as the United States, that requires a couple of things. And one is that it requires that we have a strong work ethic. It involves, you know, it means that we have to have a strong sense of personal responsibility. We have to have a strong s sense of self-respect. It seems whenever government get, gets involved with taking care of the needs of the people, it tends to break down those qualities because rather than you know, encouraging self-responsibility, taking care of yourself, or rather than encouraging family and friends to get together and solve a problem, or rather than encouraging community, such as churches, um, because churches are a great source of support, those sources are all downplayed. You know, we're, we're becoming a secular society through government. And government's coming in and taking over the situation in, in breaking down family, breaking down community, and, and breaking down, you know, just self-respect. So what I want to do is if I get elected to the Senate, I want to reverse all of the influence that the government, the federal government has assumed that falls outside of its constitutional powers. And basically just have the federal government involved in defending the nation, controlling our borders. That's the main you know, point. Everything else, as far as education, as far as health and human services, as far as health care, um, everything else falls to the people, the free market, or the states. And it only falls to the states if the people feel that they want some sort of state oversight. The state shouldn't be involved in the people's lives any more than the federal government if it's not needed. So that's basically my um, principle. And um, I could go through a lot of other things, but um, you know, just based on what I heard about tonight, you know, I don't really want to get into the economy or get into other aspects. Are there any questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs>